endometrial cavity characteristics in women with postmenopausal bleeding after uterine artery embolization. Presentation by Dr. Eileen Bafo, Dr. Adrian Balika. Uterine artery embolization is a procedure performed by interventional radiologists or vascular surgeons. In the case of fibroids, the goal is to partially occlude flow in the uterine artery so that the fibroid loses its blood supply, but the blood supply to the remainder of the uterus is in place. The embolic material is injected and is carried by arterial blood flow to the vessels feeding the fibroid, which are preferentially occluded since they are larger and have higher flow than myometrial branches. The procedure is terminated when the fibroid blood supply is occluded, but there is still flow in the uterine artery. Extensive literature review for complications of uterine artery embolization returned with what is commonly known, such as pain, fibroid expulsion, amenorrhea, post-UAE syndrome, and pain at the vascular access site. The connection between uterine artery embolization for a fibroid uterus with submucosal components and postmenopausal bleeding with cystic changes noted on ultrasound has not yet been made. The goal of this case series is to describe the sonographic findings in patients with postmenopausal bleeding after UAE for submucosal fibroids. In addition, the goals include to present the hysteroscopic findings, pathology, and clinical similarities between these cases. Patient DC is a 51-year-old P0 that presented for UAE in 2015 due to uterine fibroids. Since then, she has represented with multiple episodes of post-slash-perimenopausal bleeding. Ultrasound findings for this patient, significant floor, small collection of fluid in the endometrium as noted by the blue arrow in this image. Patient EA is a 65-year-old P2 who presented for UAE in 2005. Since then, she has also represented with postmenopausal bleeding for several years. When reviewing ultrasound images for this patient, beginning in 2010 and ending in 2018, an originally small collection of fluid in the endometrial cavity has significantly increased in size throughout the years. In this slide, live action clips from ultrasonography of patient number two is added to better visualize and compare the fluid collection seen. On the left is 2014 and on the right is 2018. Lastly, patient CC is a 54-year-old P1 that presented for UAE in 2015 for fibroids. She represented with postmenopausal bleeding in 2019. Transvaginal ultrasound done preoperatively was significant for fluid noted in the endometrial cavity, increased in size from an earlier transvaginal ultrasound. What's most striking is that transvaginal ultrasound performed in 2015 prior to UAE showed no fluid collection. In January of 2016, as well as in August of 2016, and in 2018, endometrial fluid collection was noted, with this size increasing over the years. Again, here are live action clips comparing ultrasonography in patient number 3 in 2016 on the left and 2018 on the right. Upon review of operative hysteroscopy surgical report and under direct visualization for patient CC, 
yellow-white appearing endometrium with hair-like projections at the fundus was noted. When reviewing pathology reports of these cases, it is important to stress that all return with benign causes, as outlined in these next two slides. This study adds value to our current knowledge because it allows us to look at postmenopausal bleeding in the subcentered patients in a different light. If one notices postmenopausal bleeding, cystic changes prior to hysteroscopy, and has similar hysteroscopic findings, it is a possibility that this postmenopausal bleeding is benign in nature. This could be a long-term complication of uterine artery embolization. Essentially, these patients with postmenopausal bleeding may not necessarily have to signal a red flag for the practitioner. However, this review is not meant to change current guidelines set in place, and we continue to recommend endometrial sampling in all patients with postmenopausal bleeding.